All right, so getting ready to install Complete 11. As we mentioned in the unboxing video, this hard drive that's included with Complete 11, Complete 11 Ultimate in our case, we don't install to this hard drive. This is just to install from. It's just like having, you know, DVDs. We have to install from this hard drive. So usually what's recommended is that you install to a secondary hard drive. Now, notice I'm saying a secondary hard drive. And also when I say install, I'm talking about the sample libraries. We're not talking about the actual applications. The actual applications, contact, reactor, so on and so forth. The actual application gets installed to your C drive, okay? It's the sample libraries. It's often suggested that you go ahead and install those to a secondary hard drive. Now, notice that I'm saying secondary hard drive and not external hard drive. A lot of times people think that when they hear secondary, it has to be an external hard drive. That's not true. It can be an internal hard drive. That's absolutely fine. And that's actually my, that would be my preference would be internal. Um, now you may be asking, why don't I go ahead and install to it an internal? And that is simply because I am out of space. So what we're going to do is, since we want to install to a secondary hard drive, I don't want to install this, uh, I believe this installs to about 363 gigs completely installed, I believe, uh, the ultimate version. The regular version is a bit over 100, I think, 100 and somewhere in the 200 gig range, you know, not quite 200 gigs, I don't think. Uh, we're going to put this 2 terabyte hard drive, 2 terabyte hard drive uh, in here. And as I mentioned, I already have a three terabyte hard drive and a one terabyte hard drive, but both of those are connected via USB 2.0 and I don't have any more, uh, I don't have any 3.0 ports free that I can use. So that's why I, I didn't just buy a, uh, an external uh, USB 3.0 drive, which would be okay. But the connection I like best, you know, you, like I said, USB 3.0 would be fine uh, for your samples. And the reason you really don't want to install all of your content to your OS hard drive is, you know, it, it, your OS hard drive is already going to be busy uh, with your operating system, with, in my case, Pro Tools, um, with all of the applications and uh, things like that. You don't want to really be uh, streaming data back and forth, you know, grabbing it from, oh, we got a 750 in here. I thought it was 500, so we got a 750 in here. Uh, you don't want to be streaming data if you can help it back and forth from your internal hard drive, as well as have it, let it, having it have to uh, keep up with with uh, everything else. I mean, it, it can work, especially in smaller sessions, but if you get up to really big, uh, say, say like contact uh, sessions, uh, where you have a bunch of samples streaming uh, all at the same time, it can really start to bog down your computer. So that's why it's usually suggested that uh, that you will install to a secondary hard drive. And again, that could be an internal hard drive or it could be an external hard drive. Uh, you know, we're gonna go with external in this case, but as I said, we're gonna go with eSATA. eSATA is probably my favorite connection because eSATA, which this case has an eSATA on it, eSATA port, eSATA is going to be the same as if I were to install this internally, because the eSATA connector actually goes right into the SATA port on the motherboard, all right? It's just uh, the external part is just on the back of the case. You know, USB 3 would be fine, and, and Thunderbolt should be should be more than fine as well. I just, I just prefer eSATA personally. So that's what we're gonna go with here. The first thing I have to do, though, is get this hard drive out, put our two terabyte in here, then we're going to move our 750 that we have here over into this case here because, as I mentioned, I'm completely out of space internally. I'm completely out of any other ways to just, say, keep this drive how it is and somehow buy a new case for this. I'm completely out of space. So that's what happens whenever you have <laughs> a lot of terabytes of data, of samples, of video of all kinds of things. And that drive is dirty. It's going to, to be cleaned. This case is going to, to be cleaned a little bit more as well. All right. So let me go ahead and clean this up. All right. So that's pretty good. That's not perfect. I'll have to take it out later and uh, blow it up with some compressed air. But we'll go ahead and get our new two terabyte hard drive. So now we're going to have a one terabyte, <laughs> a two terabyte, a three terabyte. We'll have a 750 external uh, 
and then we'll have two 750 internals and a 600 internal. And uh, I might be missing one. I don't, I don't know. But we're going to have a lot of damn space. So this external case, I don't need any adapter or anything. Like sometimes with uh, uh, laptops, you need adapters. But uh, this just slides right in. There we go. Now I'm just button this one up. All right, so we have our two terabyte hard drive installed. All we got to do now is connect the SATA cable that we already have connected to the computer, and of course the power, turn it on, and uh, format it, give it a name, so on and so forth. Now I don't expect most of you guys to have to do what I'm doing here. Most of you are not going to have your computer, your internal bays of your computer full. Uh, if you have a laptop, if you work mainly with a laptop, perhaps you'll need to, like I said, get an external USB 3 drive or whatever uh, port you have available. I'm not saying USB 2 won't work. I'm just saying I wouldn't use it. Me personally. It can work, but again, it's just uh, me personally, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't do that. But, you know, use what you got. Uh, you know, a lot of times in laptops also, oh, there's you'd be surprised at how many of them actually have two internal bays. So you may just want to get another internal two and a half inch drive. You can do that as well. Uh, I got a laptop that uh, has that. Now, something like a Surface, of course. Uh, you know, that, it only has the one internal SSD drive. So I don't expect most of you to have to do this, but but you probably will want to purchase an external drive or another internal drive before you go installing uh, Complete or Complete Ultimate or you know whatever uh, the case may be. I already have Complete... Um, we have Complete 9 installed, and I also have a bunch of libraries for uh, BFD3, a bunch of stuff from IK Multimedia, and a ton of other stuff, stuff from AIR, from all of the AIR instruments that we have installed. What, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just move all that F Expansion stuff, the BFD3 stuff. We're going to move all that over to our new 2 terabyte hard drive, and we're going to move everything but the... Uh, native instrument stuff that we already have installed. We're gonna move all of that over over here and we're gonna leave the native instrument stuff where it is and then we'll go ahead and install Complete 11 on the internal hard drive that's that's already in there and whenever we open up BFD3 or whatever other program We'll go into the that application and we'll change the reference To the new drive that it's on. It's it's really easy to do actually. Let me go ahead and get this thing open. All right, so we got it open. If you ever want to open up a my book, I mean, I like these cases, and like I said, they're not meant to be open. But you can see why they're so hard. Let me see if I can zoom in here. You can see why they're so hard to get open. There, we have this lip almost around this entire entire area there, but it just slides off like that. All right, so now I got to take this hard drive out and these of course they have lights on them so you have to take all this stuff off here anyway I'm not going to show this whole process because like I said more than likely no one <laughs> will be doing this the reason we're doing those because this case does have an eSATA connector on it you know I would definitely prefer just to use the three terabyte I already have but it doesn't have eSATA it doesn't have eSATA on it I mean I guess I could have taken it out of its case and put it over here but it already has a bunch of stock footage on it that I don't want to move over so let me go ahead and get this taken care of and uh, we'll go over to the computer and we'll go ahead and format that drive and I'll just show you what I mean by moving moving stuff moving stuff over onto our new two terabyte drive might as well show this here as well so here's the harder that that was in there 250 gig so we're gonna go from a 250 to a 750 which is what we had in here, but now we have two TB in here. These are pretty easy to put in. Uh, once you get everything apart, it's actually not that bad on uh, how to put these in. Got to make sure that they're the correct direction. There we go. Now I just got to put it all back together. No big deal, really. This here, as you can see, hopefully this is the ports and it's also where the hard drive actually plugs into if you can see that, but it's right there. So it slides on. There we go. Then just gotta 
finish growing everything down. And uh, we should be ready to rock. All right, so I almost got this monster back together. These are actually pretty cool how they fit in there. They got these rubber pads here. Hopefully you can see those. They actually just set in here. And it will only go in there one way. It's not too bad getting it back in. It's just getting them out is the hardest part. Getting them in is not usually too bad. There we go. And it literally just sits in there. Just like that. And then you have this plastic piece. Again, I know this has nothing to do with complete, but I figure why not, why not go over it. In here, there's a light. And that will travel through here to the front of our display there. So don't forget this piece. Sometimes people forget this piece here. It just literally sticks in there like a comb almost. And uh, there we go. So as you saw, oh, you know, it wasn't hard at all get back, get back together. And then pop this back on. And it should just snap back into place. All right, guys. Now we've got our uh, hard drives all ready. So I'll see you over at the computer. All right, so here we are at the computer and I actually have both hard drives plugged in. Now you're not seeing both of them. You're seeing this one here, which is the one we put into the MyBook. Uh, I'm going, going to have to rename it. Now it is a 750 gig, but it's it already has stuff on it and it's partitioned. It's these two partitions right here, but we're not seeing our new two terabyte hard drive. Why is that? Well, because we have to initialize it. Now, if you're buying an external hard drive, uh, it will be pre-formatted to something. It may not be formatted correctly, but it should be initialized and pretty much ready to go. If you're buying a bare drive, which we bought a bare drive meant for the internal hard drive, we, we need to initialize that and format it. So come over here to control panel and we'll come over here to administrative tools. This is something pretty much everyone probably will never go into ever. So I'm going to do administrative tools and computer management and then come over here to disk management. And there you go. You can see that we need to initialize this disk is disk four. I can't show it because of this uh, pop up right here. You could cancel out of this and just right click it in and do it that way. But we have to initialize this. We can choose MBR or GPT. I'm going to choose GPT just because it's newer. I actually could do MBR because uh, you know I'm on Windows and because the the hard drive is two terabytes, so it's not over two terabytes. So we could do MBR, but I'm going to do uh, GPT. So I'll just click OK there, and I'll just scroll down here a bit so we can actually find the drive. So right here, you can see. That's the drive right here. So we've already initialized it, but it's, it's still not going to show up uh, here because it, you know, it doesn't have a name. It's not, it's not been formatted, uh, anything, anything like that. But I can't really do the format on, you know, on screen here because it's, it's you know, it's going to take, it probably take at least an hour, maybe two or three. But anyway, to format, you can right click and go to a new simple volume. And we'll just go through here. Now, at this point, we could specify a volume size and we could go ahead and put in partitions. I have done that with some of the other hard drives. They have partitions in them. I'm just going to leave this full two terabytes. All right. You know, you don't have to, if you want to have maybe split down the middle, you could do that, but we're going to go full two TBs on this. I, I can give it a drive loader. We can always change drive letters whenever we want. Um, I actually want to name this one. I'm not sure yet exactly what I'll name this one. I might go ahead and call it F. That's fine. And uh, let's go next. And being that I'm on Windows, I want to have the file system of NTFS. And the allocation size can be default. That's okay. And we can give it a volume label, which again, we can, uh, you know, we can change this at any time, but I'll call it libraries too, because I have the uh, libraries here. And perform quick format. I actually like to untick that. That's just me. And don't, don't check the enable file and folder compression. You do not want that whenever you're streaming, <laughs> streaming data from it. You do not want that. So as soon as I click finish, it's going to, going to start the format. Uh, I can't really do that on camera. So what I'm going to show you is, so this is the hard drive that we have all of our data already on. You see, I already have all my native instrument stuff here, but as you can see, we, we don't have that much uh, room left. So what we're going to do, as I mentioned before, we're going to take everything else. You know, this is my F expansion libraries are about 300 gigs. This is 60 gigs. 
Uh, we have a ton of other data here that we're just going to move over to our new two terabyte drive. And then we'll have 300, 400 extra gigs. Uh, and that will be plenty of room because a lot of the data, or I shouldn't say a lot, some of the data will be redundant uh, that we're installing. So we'll have more than enough room on this drive after we move off about 400 gigs of stuff. Okay, so the basic takeaway of this video is whenever you're installing any large sample library uh, content, you know, any program that has a large sample library, you should probably install that to a secondary hard drive. Now that can be internal, that can be external via say eSATA, which is my favorite, or it could be Thunderbolt or USB 3. It could be USB 2. It works okay. In 2017, I would not be purchasing a USB 2.0 hard drive. But the main point is you'll probably want an external hard drive or a a secondary hard drive you you won't be wanting to install all of that data onto your c drive okay and, and having your uh, computer have to pull everything from your your main hard drive all right so in the next video after we get this formatted next video we'll actually go ahead and install complete ultimate 11.